Hello everyone, this is Luigi Rocks 2014 here with Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. Um, yeah, this is actually going to be my 17th walkthrough instead of a uh, Mario Party 6 because apparently when I tried doing Mario Party 6, that didn't really work out too well. So, yep, I'm going to try doing this game since. Apparently I've been having some disc problems with Mario Party 6 since, yeah, like the disc isn't working or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to try playing this game now. Alright, so, apparently the game, our speakers were acting up. But yeah, I'm going to try playing some Super Mario Bros. 3. This will basically be my 17th walkthrough instead of Mario Party 6 since... The disc isn't really working well, so yeah. Once I get it fixed though, then I'll probably have it be rebranded as like a different walkthrough or like walkthrough 18 or something, I don't know. But for now I'm just doing this game since, yeah. And just so a lot of you guys, just to be clear, this is not the Wii version, like this isn't this game is not being played on a virtual console or nothing like that. Yeah, it's not being played on the Wii. It's not being played on the Wii U or 3DS. It's also not being played on an emulator either. So just keep that in mind that this is actually the actual NES version that I'm playing it on. And why am I playing this on the actual NES? Well, not very many people, I guess you could say, own this game on the actual NES system. So... Most of the times people have to like buy this game on an emulator or something because for whatever reason they can't seem, they don't no longer own the NES version or never even, never even owned an NES console. So with that said, I'm going to be playing this, guy, this game on the actual NES. Ugh, I hate it when I mess up on my words. It's so annoying. So as a lot of you may know, with this game, um, unlike the other versions, you can't actually save or nothing like that. And I guess one of the reasons why many people play this game on an emulator or virtual console most of the times is because you actually get to save on most of those consoles. So, yeah, I don't know. I, don't just, I just, I don't know why you can't even save when playing this on the actual NES, but yeah, apparently you can't do that, which is ridiculous. Alright, so head in this pipe and you'll find a secret area where you can basically get some coins and stuff. So, Alright, so gra grab the star and then make your way to the end of the level. And there you go. That's level two. I'll try my best to actually show you guys every single level and stuff, but I can't really guarantee that because for whatever reason, this game, um, you can't like save or anything like that. So, or since I'm playing this on the actual NES and not like an emulator or nothing like that, I can't like use save states or nothing like that. So that's kind of the big problem with playing this on the NES is yeah, you can't use save states. So yeah, the quality or whatever looks all weird or anything like that, it's it's because, yeah, I'm playing this on the NES. And boy, the actual NES graphics, boy. I mean, they look kind of just how they are, like, on an emulator, but, like, there are some glitches and stuff with the graphics on some parts where the screen doesn't fully load up all the way. That can be a bit of a problem, but you know what? This is an old NES console that I'm playing this on, so, you know, it can't be helped if any of the graphics are all glitchy and crap, so, yeah. One of the reasons why I actually pl like playing this version better than the virtual consoles, like, why I like playing this version of Super Mario Bros. 3 than the virtual consoles, like the SNES version, or not SNES, the NES version, is because of the fact if you were to play the NES version of Super Mario Bros. 3 on, on like a virtual console, I don't know why, but the quality or 
or not the quality, the brightness for whatever reason is all dim and crap. I don't know why that is. It's just totally ridiculous that it has to look all dim and crap. Even the Wii U Virtual Console is like that too. I don't know why. Like when you play Super Mario 64 on the Wii U, I've noticed that the quality or the brightness is just as terrible, is a lot worse on the Wii U than it is with the N64 version itself because, like, why on earth would Nintendo have the brightness look all dim? It makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know if it's just to, like, to, like, preserve the energy or whatever or what, but I kind of find it totally ridiculous. So, that's why I prefer just playing the actual versions of these games more than just playing it on the newer systems like the virtual consoles or whatever because I just don't see them as any help at all whatsoever. So, yeah. Anyhow, so, that's level 5 and... Watch out for the boomerang. Now, this last item or whatever, the last star is like one of the most trickiest ones to possibly get. I honestly even forget how to get this star because I don't even remember how it's supposed to work. Alright, there we go. I got it. Yeah, it usually takes a couple attempts to try to get the star, but if you manage to match all three of the items, you get like extra, extra one-ups. The three mushrooms, if you get three mushrooms, you get a two-up. If you get three fire flowers, um, you get a three-up. And if you get like three stars, then you get a five-up. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, I got the three stars, so I basically got the five up, leading me up to 14 lives. And if you manage to get as many coins as you possibly can in, in like level four, you get this special mushroom house where you can get like a P-wing and stuff. What I prefer doing is with the P-wings, I like to save them, especially for like the final world, which is world eight, because <laughs> boy, if you don't have any reserved P-wings for the last world, oh, you might be in some deep trouble because <laughs> World 8 is like one of the most toughest worlds ever and for those who have actually played and beaten this game whether on the NES, SNES, or Game Boy Advance would know how incredibly difficult World 8 really is. So yeah. So in this castle or fortress or whatever you can get like a hidden whistle so, that basically is two whistles, because I already got one in a uh, level three. There's actually three hidden whistles. I've already shown you guys the first two. So, yeah. Anyhow, so up here is a musical note block or whatever. And then here we got one of these little secret areas where you can collect coins and stuff. And if you wait at just the right moment and start flying, you might also be able to get a 1-up in, in the sky. So, yep. And there you go. There's the 1-up. Now, some people have probably played this game before and have probably also have gotten game overs before when playing this game. Yeah, where if you, like, die enough times, you could get a game over. I used to get a lot of game overs when I used to play the NES version of this game. But after a while, you know, I've gotten better to the point where I had managed to stop getting those stupid game overs. So yeah. I've never actually made it up to 99 lives in this in this version of Super Mario Bros. 3. But in the Game Boy Advance one I have. But I, I do know in the Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario Bros. 3 you can get more than just 99 lives and actually go up to like... 999 it is possible but yeah I just I've never made it that far to reach up to reach that many live that many lives look all right so break those blocks and then I thought I was gonna go to the left you know that stupid one up 
But whatever, that's fine. And you know, I thought I actually had gotten that star, but I guess the game glitched on me. So apparently even if so apparently if you don't manage to match all the items, you're just gonna get a one up and stuff. Which you will probably see that in the next video. Alright, so over there you can get yourself a star and then yeah. Alright, and here's the last level, one of these little castle levels. Yeah, and the king's been transformed. Apparently the seven Kooplings had stolen the magic wands from the, I guess, the seven worlds or whatever, and so we have to go and get those back. Peach also doesn't really get kidnapped in this game, or Princess Toadstool, or so a lot of people would think, but that's not really the case, unfortunately. Alright, so since I lost my raccoon tail, I guess I'm just going to have to grab this fire flower in. I thought I could have landed on that cannonball, but I guess not. All right, come on. Whoa, run. All right, just head down the pipe. And there we go. Get yourself the magic wand, and we're pretty much done with world one. And now I'm not gonna always do an entire world per video, or at least not with all the parts, but because some of the other worlds later on get tend to be a lot longer and so it takes like several parts to try to finish that world. You know, maybe as long as I don't die that much, I might just be able to finish all these worlds in one video, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, and if this was being played on the SNES or Game Boy Advance, there would usually be like a little bit of background music for the letters and stuff. But since this is the NES, apparently that's not really how it goes. Alright, I'll see you guys next time in World 2.